Hello, everybody. We are back. It's been a busy few weeks uh, around the shop. We've been doing lots of cool things. One of them you can see behind us. I wanted to display a bunch of the cool posters that I've had kicking around the shop. So I made a poster wall. Uh, and I took a bunch of the empty boxes I get um, and made a backsplash out of the empty boxes. Because um, a lot of times you'll buy parts and there'll be used parts in a box um, or not the right part in a box. And um, so then I would keep them. And uh, I always wanted to do something with them, and I had this idea to do a backsplash, and so I did it. So let me know if you have a favorite box. I think I, I love the salsa boxes with the, the chilies and the peppers. Um, I think those are fun. And then, let's see. Um, see, there's another salsa box. Um, I mean, the, the flight box with the Concorde is obviously super cool. And then we have a bunch of posters. We have this Gary Fisher poster, which is signed, which is super cool. Schwinn um, downhill mountain biking in the snow. Team Richie, another Schwinn homegrown poster. Sorry about the reflection. Still working on getting the lighting perfect here. Another Schwinn suspension poster. Got a 1992 cyclocross, which is funny because he's on a mountain bike and not a cyclocross bike. And I actually know a few gentlemen that raced that race and it was a drop bar only race. So it's funny that they put a mountain biker on a cyclocross poster, but it's there. We got John Tomac. Ned Overland, obviously the big old, I had to get a big old Gringineer logo poster because I love how the new logo turned out. Um, Team Saturn Road poster, I mean, just a great vista. Um, this is a fun mountain bike poster. I mean, that's totally a stump jumper uh, that, you know, they put mountain bike on and it's in Italian and English. So just a really fun poster. Um, have to have a Le Mans poster. He's got the drop-in bars, which is cool because I have a Cannondale up here that has them on it. So that was fun. Um, another John Tomac poster. That one is signed too. And we have this Bontrager poster. I forgot the name of that rider, but... So I put a bunch of posters up there, and then I got the ladder over here because this is a work in progress, but I'm also hanging posters up on this part of the ceiling because there's really nothing else you can do up there. So we got Team Stump Jumper from 89. Got a Fat Chance poster, Moots, another homegrown poster, Pinarello poster, and then Started to hang up some jerseys up on the walls, so the shop is getting a little bit more. More of the cool stuff that I've collected we're getting up on the walls of the shop, so y'all can take it in. Yeah, hung up some banners above the, the counter there, so lots of fun stuff going on. But to get back to what we're talking about today, we have... Uh, Cannondale Raven Super V 1000. Um, so we're just going to do a walkthrough of this cool bike. This bike is actually for sale up on the shop right now. Um, there'll be a link below if this is something you're interested in. So this is a 1999 Cannondale. And it has one of the coolest paint jobs. Um, it goes from purple to green, depending on where you are when you look at it. It seems to be mostly purple in the camera, but there we can see some green. And it's also, because it's carbon, it um, we see the weave through the paint. 
and it kind of looks like snake scales too. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really cool paint job and it looks even better in the sunlight, um, than it does under the lights here. Um, interesting thing about these Cannondales is top and bottom, there are these aluminum ridges and then there's the carbon is like two halves, um, because, you know, this is the early days of carbon fiber, um, and they still were kind of playing with how to mount and make the frames. So these were the, there was a, some structural aluminum framework, and then the carbon pieces um, bonded to that and made the complete frame. Obviously, Cannondale, so it's rocking a head shock. Um, but it does have some really nice parts on it. Sadly, the handlebar uh, got faded out from the sun. It was black, as you can see here, where the shifter has been moved from. Um, that seems to happen with some of these like anodized black parts um, that just set in the sun. It's amazing that the, the stem didn't start to turn that like coppery color. You'll, some of the stems will turn. Otherwise, we have Avid Arch Rival 50 brakes that come with the, the built-in brake bo um, booster. Uh, XTR rear to railer. XT, a little bit of rust on there. Uh, XT front to railer. The Coda crank. Um, it was a little bit of scuff, probably from being on a rack or something. And obviously the bike does have the, the classic ding. So as you see here, the seat post, there's no seat tube. And the seat post is mounted to the frame via these two clamps. And most likely at some point in time, somebody had the seat post lower and then hit some rowdy terrain because this is what happens is um, the seat post will slam into the frame. Now on some of these designs, if they're designed poorly, it would hit the, the shock and really goof things up. At least on this one, it just mars the frame and your seat post. Um, the original Fox vanilla float R shock still working. Um, Probably you could use a complete rebuild, but she is functioning. Um, Pan Eraser, uh, Fire XC Pro. These are the blue, you know, the white, blue, red. Now the whites, that are, the top of the tires normally white, but that wears away the fastest. So red and blue stripes. Uh, let's see what else is cool about this bike. I mean, the paint job is the coolest thing. I really love the paint job. Um, well, the grips are cool. They kind of, they spell Coda, which is, I think, a cool thing. But they're, like, actually pretty, like, grippy, you know, for, in a kind of a fun design. So that's cool. Um, XT, M7, M750 shifters. So just an all-around uh, fun bike. Uh Coda saddle. Um, so as I mentioned, this bike is up on the shop. Um, Thousand dollars shipped in the continent of the United States. Um, does have a little bit of scuffing on the frame, but no cracks or dents in the carbon. I mean, or in the aluminum, and no cracks in the um in the carbon so that's good uh, i forgot to wipe that fork leg off it's been in storage for a little bit so it'll get a wipe down here and it'll be ready to go home to somebody so if you're interested make sure to check out the link below um and that's this bike and then i have something else cool to show you so let me go grab the next thing Okay, so the next cool bike I have to show you today is a Manitou full suspension. 
This thing is cool. This was one of my dream bikes. And um, unfortunately, this one is damaged. Um, I, it has some pretty big dingers on the top tube. One here, one here. But the worst is down here on the bottom of the top tube. Not sure how it got there. It's dented and starting to spider web crack. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, so what I've decided to do is to take her apart because there's some really good parts that could help people with their Manitou projects. Um, one being that the seat tube on these Manitous is oversized. So we take out our handy dandy trusty caliper. We'll see that the seat tube is 38.5-ish. Um, and so the band, it's a custom band made for the Manitous. So that's a, a sought after part. Um, same with the seat post. And then um, the Chris King no logo turquoise headset um, is another very um, unique part uh, and this one's in good condition you know it needs to be cleaned up but because of the way the cables were routed we didn't get any cable rub uh, anywhere so and we have the top cap and we so as long as when I take it apart everything's in good good condition then there'll be a good headset to to um, go to somebody's bike we have XTR Canties, and the one thing I'm kind of sad about taking this bike apart is the brakes are just, especially this front brake, like, whoo, that's set up good. But we have XTR shifters with the hoods, Hyperlight bar. Um, looks like they, you know, nothing fancy for grips or binds. It's kind of Bond Traeger Trek stuff. Um, we do have. A Manitou 3, so this one's functioning, but probably we'll still rebuild it with a new elastomers just because that's an easy fix. Um, I did test ride it, and unfortunately, as you can see, the um, rear suspension is collapsed, so you don't really get the, the feel of it. Um, so I need to rebuild the suspension if I wanted to you know, kind of ride it and feel how it is. But with how bad this crack is, I don't really want to put the money into fix the suspension to then ride it. Um, so it's going to get hung up on the wall next to our equally cracked Manitou HT. So I might go there. I might have to move the Kona King, but I want it near the Manitou. So maybe it'll go over there. I don't know. We're in the middle of redesign, so... Got room to put stuff, but we're going to start to strip this today and take some parts off of it and make a pile back here on the bench. And uh, so that's what we're going to work on. Um, so let me go grab some tools and we'll get started. Okay, so we're just going to start to disassemble this and get all the good parts off of it. Kind of the first nasty thing we found other than the crack frame a big chunk of the uh hyperlite bars missing from over tightened uh bar ends so we'll measure and see if we can cut that off and we'll do it on the other side also and see if the bar is still uh usable with and if not well recycling or art Another really cool thing is I like how they did the cable. They ran 
the rear derailleur cable underneath and out the the hole right here. So underneath the brake bridge or the arch and then through here. I mean, it's just a great solution and a great way to do it. Obviously, it did lead to the wearing of through all the ho the covering of the housing and some wearing on the um, wearing here also. Um, but I mean, from years of just back and forth wiggle, that's what's going to happen. And they have this little guide down here that held it so it didn't flop around too bad. So those are cool features. And obviously, I mean, come on, it has fork legs for rear suspension. Like, that's why this bike is so cool. And I hope to find a non-cracked one one day. So, And actually probably a size bigger because this one was a little tiny for me. But we're just going to keep taking her apart. So this is a 1993 also, um, which is pretty cool. The hardtail, I believe, is a 94. Seven? I'm not positive, but that number is what I seem to recall it being. They have a really easy to read serial number because it actually says the date of production. Um, so this one was May of 93. So that's cool. So just a really nice build kit too. Um, these XT cannies. M900s are just some of the perfect candy brakes. They look good. They function the way they're supposed to. They're easy to set up. Makes for some nice, just nice brakes. So I want to get back into filming more. And so I'm contemplating doing just more of these, this is what I'm up to today videos. Cause we're always up to something cool, vintage mountain bike wise, taking bikes apart, building bikes, cleaning parts. Um, so, you know, comment below if you like this kind of just more day-to-day -day operation of what's going on video i know the front half of this video had me showing off a bike um but the second half is just this is what i was going to do next um so let me know in the comments uh what you think what you'd like to see and uh we're going to try to make it happen i'm going to try to make it happen yeah i can just tell this bar is already short so it's gonna end up being real short if we uh, if we cut to, to save that, try to save it. I mean, somebody still might want it, but it's gonna be stubby because we're gonna have to cut off like a centimeter off both sides. It was 585. Eh, it would only be 575, so it'd be long enough to keep. 560s, under 560 when it starts to get real, real short. This here handlebar. Oh, that has not been loosened in a while. That's right there, some galvanic corrosion. Aluminum stem, maybe a steel bolt. Ooh, let's take it tight. Oh. A bunch of stuff in them. Huh. There was a bunch of gunk in the handlebar. Maybe dried up bar end plug or something. So for wheels, I don't know if I mentioned the wheels when we were doing our little tour. It has Polestar hubs. Silver pull star, that's backwards. Silver pull star hubs laced to some Mavic 231s. So that'll be a that'll be a cool wheel set. 
we don't have matching skewers. We have, that might be the OG Polestar skewer. But then back here we have a Shimano skewer. Um, the brake studs look in good condition, so that's always good. Fronts and rears. We have an AC fork bridge, silver one. That's cool. Yeah, I'll just keep taking it apart. So this would have been an upgrade, this rear derailleur at some point in time, because uh, this would have had an M900 rear derailleur on it, and this is M952. It was not out in 93. And then the front derailleur, as I mentioned, has its own special band. So you can see it's just a much bigger band to go around the uh, bigger down to, but nothing special. Um, I just actually, it's funny enough, probably a month ago a customer was in need of this band and I didn't have one and he got one made. Um, so, you know, they're, they are makeable if you need one. You just need to, to be able to bend some flat steel and put squares in it so that they can hook into the derailleur. But we'll sell this one for this use and somebody will gladly take it to put on there. Manitou. I'm really hoping that this Ringle cage isn't cracked. Because a lot of the time they crack behind the bolts. So let's find out. Well, let's take this junkie. This is sacrilege right here. Having a Walmart Schwinn cage on such a nice bike. Question is, is it going to be cracked or is it going to be complete? Oh. Ooh. We're good. It's not cracked. Awesome. I don't know if I like that. Came out of there tighter than I would have ex expected. Huh. Yeah, I just want to make sure to get the washer out of there. So, I love it when you go to put your crank tool remover in there. It won't be a happy camper. Okay, now we're gonna take this beautiful headset off. Ooh. All the bolts in this the handlebar bolts and these stem bolts are all over tightened. Or just have not been loosened in a long time. Okay, we're back with a new battery. So we should be able to get this fork and headset off. We're going to be building a tool setup here. We just haven't, I haven't gotten that far yet. So one day.
Okay, so I have the frame all apart and wiped down so that can get ready to be hung up with next to the other Manitou and then all the parts that we're going to take off are here. So we have the seat post collar, the fork, XTR crank set, Ringo bottle cage, XTR front derailleur with the special clamp, M952 rear derailleur, XTR shifters with the rubber boots, XTR cannies, the answer attack stem, the Chris King headset. So we'll be getting all those parts clean. Oh, and the answer bar, which is a little broken. So yeah, that's all the parts off the Manitou um, that we're gonna keep. Oh, and the wheels, the Polestar wheels, some dirt and smoke tires. Um, so we'll get all that stuff clean and put up on the website along with these other parts that I have to keep sorting. So we got some skewers and some campy bits and um, everything else. So new parts will be coming on the website over the next few days. So make sure to check the site and there will be a link for that below. Thanks for watching this video. Um, I look forward to reading your comments about what kind of videos you're looking to see in the future. Um, I look forward to making more videos about just kind of the day-to-day -day things going around the shop and projects we're working on. Um, the shop redesign is almost completed. few little things left so Soon the shop will be back open so you can come visit and check it out if you're local or visiting Minnesota. Um, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Check out the rest of our videos and have a good rest of your day. Bye.